Hey, so welcome back. In this uh, series of lectures, I'm going to go into the mathematical topics of equilibrium and stability and talk about how we find equilibrium and uh, find the equilibria in, in models and tell if those equilibria are stable or not. Um, since we've been talking about population models, I'm going to do this in the context of population models. But these concepts uh, are going to extend to any of our other sort of dynamic models that we're interested in. Uh, so as a reminder, uh, we've been doing a lot of work in the last few videos on the logistic growth model. Uh, we just finished up looking at the sensitivity of the logistic growth model to its population growth rate and its initial conditions. And the slides for that were developed in our markdown. They're available through our studio. Um, and today we're gonna talk about uh, first equilibrium so we, for example, in the logistic growth model, we saw that the population tended to uh, go to a, a, an equilibrium at K, the carrying capacity. Um, why is that? And how do we figure out what that equilibrium is for other sorts of models? Um, and also the concept of stability. Um, does, does a population tend to go towards that equilibrium and if it gets there will it stay there or is the equilibrium unstable it's it's safe if it's there but if it's perturbed away from that equilibrium will it move further away towards some other equilibrium so let's dive first into the concept of an equilibrium so as a reminder uh i'm going to start by focusing on the logistic exam model as an example and that model we thought of population growth rate, DNDT, as a function of the current population size, uh, the intrinsic growth rate, and this term, one minus N over K, that causes the per capita growth rate to decline uh, uh, from R when the population is very small down to zero um, when the population is at K. So, this formulation, dn dt, is our continuous time version, um, where we're viewing this as a continuous solution, continuous time. We're not just iterating from one time point to another. Uh, and so when we ask, when, how do we know uh, that a continuous model time model has reached an equilibrium? Uh, this is probably a, a concept that was familiar to us from just basic calculus. Uh, when we solve for the equilibrium, of a, a differential equation. Uh, we do that for asking when uh, that change dn dt is zero. And that kind of makes sense. If, if you're not changing, you're at some sort of equilibrium. So anytime we have a differential equation, we can do this, set the derivative equal to zero, find uh, that equilibrium. And so in that case, this is a very simple case because we didn't, the derivatives are already taken. We wrote the model in terms of derivatives. And so we can just, set that equal to zero, and then we solve for where the equilibrium is. Now, important point to remember here, uh, we're solving in terms of n. Uh, so we can't, you know, saying r equals zero is not a case for an equilibrium. Uh, it is true when, when your little gro intrinsic growth rate is zero that you are not changing, but it's not really uh, a solution uh, in this case, because it's that would be invariant n. We're, we're always solving with respect to uh, n. So two cases here. Um, one is when n equals zero. Uh, so that when this if this equals zero, that times anything will be zero. The other is when the second term uh, one minus n over k equals zero, and that solves for n equals k. So that actually shows that there are two equilibrium. And even though we saw uh, in most of the simulations we did that the equilibrium was tending towards n equals k, it makes sense that n equals zero is also an equilibrium. If, if a species is extinct, it is going to continue to stay extinct. Um, so n equals zero always is an equilibrium. And in fact, that's a pretty common thing for all of our population models we're going to find. If, if you are extinct, you will st stay extinct. and uh, yeah, this is an important, important you know, quiz or exam hint is not to forget that that second equilibrium at zero. 
things are, are only slightly more challenging for discrete time. Um, I find that folks have a tendency to uh, miss questions about discrete time equilibrium on exams because they mistake the criteria as the same as for continuous time. Um, so if, if the continuous kind time for criteria for no change was dn dt equals zero, the discrete time criteria for no change is not setting this n to zero, it's saying uh, when are things not going to change. Uh, and things are not going to change when n of t plus one is the same as n of t. So if the future is the same as the present, then there's no change, which is another way of saying uh, the equilibrium is when n doesn't depend on the subscripts t. So if we just say n at t plus one is n, and n at t is n, we just solve for n. So you set the future equal to the uh, present. Uh, and this is not, neither of these is being set equal to zero. Setting the whole discrete time model to zero is gonna give you a very, very wrong answer. Um, and since we most commonly are doing these models in discrete time, I would say take extra attention and remember, be aware of what we did here. We're saying the equilibrium is when our future n of t plus one and the present n of t are the same. So n of t plus one equals n of t, which equals just n. Um, we're not setting this equal to zero. That said, when we start solving this, if we uh, subtract n from each side, we do get our n one minus n over k equals zero, but that's just algebra. There's nothing magical there. Um, and we end up with the same equilibria as the continuous time. Okay, so uh, as a, a, a hint, something to think about is if you had a different model that had very different mathematical formulation, how would you find the equilibrium here? Uh, and one very wrong answer that people frequently give on exams is to say the equilibrium is K, carrying capacity. Well, there's no K in this model. So K can't be the right answer. Um, so I think this is a great practice problem to think about how would you figure out the equilibrium of a discrete time model. So again, this is not, also not set in terms of derivatives. So don't just set this thing equal to zero. Cool, we'll pick up. Uh, next, by thinking about uh, once we know where the equilibrium are, how do we figure out if they're stable or not?